Hello everyone and compliments of the season. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I use chat GTP in my Blender workflow. Basically showing you how you can create tools or add-ons or even just basic scripts to help in your day-to-day -day, um, work using Blender. Of course, there are some limitations in the sense you can't just use chat GTP to probably create like a whole new render engine or like a whole fire simulation tool. Um, that limitation aside, there are still lots of ways you can use this to speed up some repetitive tasks or just create basic tools from different operations that you usually have to click lots of buttons. So let's quickly jump right into it. I'm going to show you a tool which I created with it um, just today. Try to perfect the skills of it. So I'm going to make this a mesh. So let's say you want to quickly hide an object. I forgot the exact reason why I wanted a tool like this, but um, I still created it. So basically, if I select um, a vertices, I can quickly do quick mask. Um, I, if you unhide it, it's not visible. Uh, but this is a new mask now, so you can also see it in the viewport. So let's say you have an object behind it and you want to quickly edit it without affecting it so this is a way to quickly see that object behind it and you can quickly just cancel the math um, so any part of the model you select and do quick mask you can quickly have this um, so this is like stuff you could do with it i will show you another tool which i created let's just open the script um where did i have that same text up uh, give me a second. Okay, so this is the script. I'm just gonna copy it and click on new and just run it. We will have this tool here. So it's just a nice randomized tool so I can click on it and it randomizes object. I could set the amount of random object which I want and the distance. So let's set this to like 50 for distance. And we have the distance more. We could even change the object to two. And we have just two duplicates of that. So these are like cool tools which uh, if you want to do stuff like this will take time. But with um, AI and I have little to know. I mean I know how to write PPY and just copy a lot of tools here and create script. But that's the maximum I know. Uh, but with this you can create actual tools that you could use for uh, projects. Uh, which is quite awesome. Okay, so let's get started. I will create a new scene and let's start with the basic. So to access this, you have to go to this site called chatopenai.com. I'm going to put the link in the description. So if you're interested, you can check it out. Um, it's a very vast tool. So it has a vast tool set. So you could do a lot of stuff from writing uh, description for tutorials or just right um doing regular math it can do a lot of things but so if you want to do a blender specific stuff you need to tell it um this is a blender specific stuff i'm doing and it's going to remember that in the whole conversation so the way i just quickly start is i just write bpy and we go so it's going to load it's going to tell you the information it knows about bpi which is basically blender python api and you just wait, um, it just writes what is right here. I'm just going to pause the video for a bit. Okay, so it told us everything it knows about the Blender um, BPY. And now you have initiated a conversation. So you want to look at it as a conversation. And you want to make that conversation as detailed as possible so that it understands you basically. Uh, so let's start with a simple uh, conversation. Uh, we've started a conversation so we could start with a simple instruction. Uh, we could tell it, hey... Um, write a script that adds a cube on a sphere um, and place them randomly place them randomly okay so let's make it more interesting we'll make it five cubes and five spheres okay and we run the script so since we have initiated the conversation saying bpy and it has given us like a background it knows automatically that we are dealing with the bpy um 
domain. So basically everything is going to be outputting uh, Blender related stuff. Uh, so we'll just let it write the, the script and we can go from there. Okay, so it's done writing the script and it goes ahead and give you some more detailed description of what it just did. So you, if you don't want to wait, you can just copy it now. And let's come here into Blender and click on new in your script editor. It may look different from mine, but um, you should get something like this. So we just click on um, play and you get it. So we got this a cube, couple of cubes and a couple of sphere placed randomly. And you can edit this as you want. You could make this 10 and you can make this 12. And there we go. Okay, so let's see how you can use this to create tools that can be like placed here or placed in any part of the scene. Uh, so for that, just to be on the safer side, uh, since we are dealing with, like I mentioned, it's like a conversation and it tends to follow the thread of your conversation. Um, just to be safe, you want to start a new conversation for every new um, process you, you want or new tool you want to write. So if you're writing a tool that will add a cube, after you're done with that conversation, try to start a new chat to be able to <laughs> make it do a new um, activity. So same thing we did earlier, we initiate the BPY and it goes ahead and do its thing. Okay, so it's done now and we can tell it, um, write a script that uh, write a script located in the 3D viewport and panel. So the reason I did this is because we have lots of end panels. So if you go to the node editor, excuse me, we have an end panel there. So you, you need to make it as specific as possible. And sometimes you might even like, um, copy uh you can copy the properties just to get the exact name that blender uses so that it's when you're communicating with it you are very precise with that information so the more precise you are the more accurate and uh, the easier it understands you uh, so i'm using the 3d viewport and panel and then i i will give the name of the the, the add-on basically so i will call call it uh the wizard okay so that's the end of that so it's, this is going to create um a panel and a session a session called the wizard so we want to tell it create a button um that create a button that from uh, created button that a button called uh, what function do we want to do add subset modifier add sub div okay so this um this button adds a sub division modifier. So if you want to, we could go this route and kind of get our result, but um, it might not be specific enough. So if, if you want to even make the work easier, what you can do is, so we can actually run all the operations. I'm going to add the simple, um, let's do this more simple one. Okay going to add this and bring out the info editor. Okay. I'll just delete all of this. I can delete this. Okay. So I'm going to run the S S uh, operation, which I want to do. So I'm going to add a subdivision modifier. I will just copy that and place it here. So we add a subdivision and this is what we want the button to do. Okay. And we can just Got sub this this button. So we just place that code. Okay. And then we'll tell it now add a slider to control of the to control. So we want to make sure we get the exact name. 
um, the subdivision levels. Okay. So I'm going to put um, this in brackets, basically not uh, making it as broad as possible with the values you can put there. Uh, so this is just a set with script I'm writing. So it's simple, some simple words and then some precise code from Blender. Um, one other tool that could help you is this uh, Sapens um, copy, um, Sapens um, add-on. It's basically like a visual scripting add-on. Um, but one cool feature, it comes with this copy properties that like enhances the amount of code which you can copy in Blender that is quite limited from the default setting. Though Blender allows you to copy lots of information like um, copy edit source, uh, um, yeah, so, but uh, the Sapens does a much better job in copying that. So I use that from time to time. And yeah, once you have all of this, you can just click on uh, run. So it's going to do its thing and we'll come back once it's done. Okay, so it's done and we can copy the code and paste it and we run. So we can see it created, it created the panel in the 3D viewport called Louis Art. We have the Art subdivision and we have the level available okay so this is a success and um, sometimes you might get an error and what you do in those situations is you just click on regenerate response so right now it adds only control for the viewport control that's in the terms of the level control so we can we can modify that to make it add one for the render so we'll say um add another slider for the render so we can just copy this like we did earlier copy properties and paste it and see so copy that and run the script so like it's a conversation basically it's going to remember the previous um information and then from that um it's going to output new information so from this i am not uh it's not like writing the script from or it's not going the way i want so i'll just let it finish and then we can tell it to regenerate script i mean if you're familiar with scripting it's probably um, it will be easy for you to like copy all of this and try to, um, it will be easy for you to fix this if you're a recorder, but for us lay motors, this is what we'll have to do with it. Uh, so it has kind of set up what we can do. So if I copy this code and let's see if I paste it here and let's see what we get. Okay, so that didn't work. I would just regenerate the response. So you, re if it fails, you tell it do it again, and most times it does as well. So now it's starting from import BPY, BPY, which is basically how you start coding in Blender for like simple, simpler codes. Um, but yeah, you just let's wait and see what the final result is. Okay, so it's done. So we can copy this and paste it and run. So now we have control for the viewport and for the output so we can add another modifier so i think it's adding for it's just controlling the the most latest one it adds so that's fine uh, i mean you can still go in and tell it to do more things and let's try to add one more tool so we can tell it uh, add a button Called, uh, called decimate okay and to make it easy we can like I mentioned you add the decimate modifier to be a more precise way to tell it exactly what you need so decimate just paste this here so I can copy it and okay
that okay and also uh, okay it's gonna go ahead and do that i also wanted to kind of um, create the slider but we can do it after that okay so it's done and i can copy this code and paste it here so we have one to add the decimate modifier i will just delete all of this and finally let's control the ratio so for the ratio i can just paste it here or just copy it and tell it create a slider add slider four so i'm gonna set this like this and let's say okay so it's finishing it up and then yeah we can copy the code and paste it and that's the latest we don't have that can add a decimate control the ratio add a subdivision and control it yeah so you kind of get the drill and note you can still achieve all of this without having to copy the code from blender you can actually if you can explain it in words very clearly it's going to understand it uh so but, but it helps if you're very very precise and sometimes it you might get it and it doesn't work you just keep hitting generate that's the mustaskin aspect of this you just keep hitting generate for it to uh basically work for you uh yeah so that'll be it if you have any questions regarding this even more you can let me know in the comment and if if you need me to make a more specific video for something else you can let me know uh yeah so that's it compliments of the season i hope you guys are having a wonderful time talk to you soon and bye bye for now